All right, if I could have your uh, attention, please. I just want to uh, welcome you all. Thank you. Appreciate you coming out tonight. If you haven't as yet, we would like for you to sign in. If you would like to get notifications, include your email address on it. You don't have to put your email address if you're not interested in that, but I think some folks here will attest to the fact that if I have contact information, members of our committee have tried to send out updates and, and keep people in the loop. Um, so the way we're gonna do this tonight, we are on NorCam. Um, the microphones that you see are only for the broadcast. They're, so they do it on TV. I'll try and get the microphones around for you as, uh, as we get into the discussion part so that you'll be heard on TV as well. Uh, but any projecting of your voices will be appreciated. Um, we're gonna start off with a presentation uh, of the latest updates, where we're at with, with the uh, trail. Um, that will be followed by a list of, uh, a list of frequently asked yeah. questions. We'll go through the questions and have answers. And as we go through them, we'll go through them one by one. So if the answer doesn't satisfy your query, you can ask on that topic and we'll continue with that. Then at the end of the frequently asked questions section, if there are other concerns or questions to be asked, that's when we'll open it up, okay? Uh, in the last couple of months, the plans for the trail have been updated several times as a direct result of feedback from the public. Uh, constructive input will be considered going forward. There will be no vote taken tonight or in the immediate future. Um, so there will only be a limited time for people expressing opinions. We don't want to tie up. We could be here all night with everybody. Just So we want to deal with questions and concerns as best we can. There will probably be another hearing before any plan is submitted as a warrant article for town meeting in the future. And nothing can be done to develop a trail without an affirmative vote at town meeting. So again, when you leave here tonight, don't think in two weeks there's gonna be somebody with a shovel out there trying to make the path, okay? And if they are, they're run off the night, all right? Um, and when we get to the speaking time, I would ask that you would Ask to be recognized first and have your questions and comments go through the chair so that we don't get crazy with the conversation, okay? We, we're here, we want, we're, we're glad to have you here, we wanna hear your feedback, but we also wanna keep it constructive. Does that sound fair enough? All right, if nothing else, then Phil Hertz will start with the presentation of where we're at with the trail. I, I thought, I have a presentation to go through the PowerPoint. I thought we'd just take five minutes first to sh show a few pictures of the trail. There's been a lot of discussion. We've um, originally, the idea was to keep the trail right on the rail bed or very, very close to the rail bed, um, but that would have required um, going through some yards. And um, we, as, as Ken said, we've moved away from that. Um, we've gone for um, having uh, basically on road a on-road trail for about 65% of the trail would be on-road and 35% of the trail would still be in the woods. Um, the, the important part of the trail, the important part of the trail that's in the woods still remains. And that's what I'd like to show you with the photos that the 35% of the trail that's gonna be in the woods is, is what we're after. We're after getting, get, getting access to woods and access to areas of the, of the town that have previously not been accessible. So let me, let me just start with, I'm gonna start from the trail in the, um, that's what works. All right, 
So starting in the east, the, the, the trail is going to go through North Parish Park. The trail would start in the east at Chestnut Street. You can, you can see the rail bed um, in, from Chestnut Street and driving along Park Street. You can see it off in the woods. So the, the, the trail would, would, would end right at Chestnut Street and proceed through that um, this sort of heavily, densely wooded area to the, to the west of North Parish Park. And then it would go through North Parish Park. This is the actual rail, boat, rail bed. This is where the railroad went. And then proceed, um, proceed, proceed east. Um, there would be a bridge over the, over the river and eventually get to Ipswich River Park. So, I mean, that's North Parish Park. Everybody knows that from just driving down Park Street. Now, that's, that's, what, that's what the rail bed looks like today, just to the, to the west of Parish Park. So you can you can sort of see there's still there's still some abutments in place, and and there's a bit of a bit of a trail, and that would go, I don't know, maybe 800 900 feet until it hits Chestnut. That's that's also North Parish Park. Um, I'm not certain exactly where the rail bed is, but it's somewhere that, towards the left of that picture. Now part of the project is going to have a, a bridge. Um, there's going to be a number of bridges, maybe even as many as four bridges. Um, one, of the, one of the bridges will connect um, Park Street just opposite the high school, middle school playing fields, um, and there'll be a bridge that goes through the wetlands connecting to Ipswich River Park. So if you can see on the picture here, you can see where the playing fields are, and if you were standing right in front of the playing fields and turned around, you'd see the picture on the, on the right. The, 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 that spot is between the dentist office and Duval Roofing. Most people would know that area. And then on the other side of that, that guardrail um, is where the fence, the fence would, the fence would call them all, the, the bridge would come all the way out to the sidewalk, but the, um, the actual trail and crossing the bridge would be on that, it would be right there. Um, this is just inside that guardrail, and Ipswich River Park is maybe 150, 200 yards in the background. Now, a lot of people don't know, but the, the actual the rail bed, the railroad went through what is now Ipswich River Park. Um, you can sort of see this is all Ipswich River Park, and the, and the rail bed is actually there. Um, and um, there are uh, still trails that follow the rail bed. Existing trails are in Ipswich River Park that follow the rail bed. Um, there's, there's, um, there's one of them. That's the part of the rail bed. That's part of the rail bed. This is all, this is all existing within Ipswich River Park. The, uh, the, the trails would be, would, these all would be paved trails, so this, the, the, these trails would be improved. Now that's, a, that's, that's just outside Ipswich River Park um, to the west of Central Street. There's a little, the, the rail bed goes through the woods and you come to this abandoned rail bridge. Um, a lot of people in town go to Ipswich River Park all the time and never know this is only about 150 feet from Ipswich River Park. Um, clear evidence that there really was a train there. Um, on the sort of going to the west side of town, there's connecting Ipswich River Park and ha basically Havel Street to um, what we're going to call Riverwoods, which was the former Smith property, is, is primarily sidewalk or, or, or on road trail. Um, the, the entrance to what we're going to call Riverside, Riverwoods, excuse me, Riverwoods, would be here on Elm Street. Um, that is, the, that's town-owned land, and a parking area would be built right there, and then a bridge would, it, would be a, adjacent to the parking area, spanning the Ipswich River, its marshes, and, and into the area of Riverwoods and to the, and to the trail to the south. I'll show you on more maps so you can get the bigger picture, but this is just to give you an idea of, of, of if you can get access, if we can get into these lands, this is what's here today. Some of this would be improved to, to be um, asphalted bike trail, or not bike trail, or walking trail. Um, some of it would probably just remain um, as paths for people to, to explore. Um, this is the actual rail bed as it exists in North Reading. This is this is this probably this may or may not be part of the, the 
the the rail trail. This is this is this is in the Riverwoods area, the, 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 the quote former Smith property. You can see that it's extensively used by uh, ATVs, dirt bikes. Um, they're, they've done a lot of damage in there, tearing up the woods. Um, one one feature of the having it as a as a rail trail would be that it probably would eliminate almost all the ATV use. Um, Riverwoods, this is as it exists today. Um, all right, now the 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 section of, of, of Riverwoods and the trail in North Reading abuts extensive um, wetlands and, and trails within the town of Linfield. Um, and Linfield is in the process of <coughs> improving their trail and uh, building access from the rail bed out to Main Street Linfield, which would give access to the Independence Greenway, which is the, the large, rail, large rail trail um, in Peabody. So these are, these are photos of, of what it looks like in Linfield and would be directly, directly connected into the, the network in North Reading. Um, there would be access, access to the Ipswich um, from the trails. The, uh, um, one of the challenges for, for Middleton and Lin, Linfield is if the, the, the access they're planning is a little bit circuitous um, to get to Main Street. The most direct access is through the Bostic plant um, which may eventually work out or may not, um, but even, regardless of whether Bostic gives um, permission, they're, they're, Linfield does have access to Main Street. Okay. All right. So that that's that's what the trail would look like. The um, the Riverwoods that Riverwood section. Um, is beautiful. Um, people, there are ways of getting in there now. You do have to go in through the Lynn pumping station, which, or you have to get it go in through the through um, Linfield land. But um, th that's really what, what is one of the primary goals is to get access to that land that the town of North Reading has not had access to since they purchased that land um, 10 or 15 years ago. Um, so let's just go through quickly. Um, the presentation. Um, the history of the the history of the project was a feasibility study was funded in 2018 by town meeting, um, and um, we also received a grant from Mass Trails, which is part of DCR. Um, and the purpose of that feasibility study was to subject route the, to to, uh, to explore route options, planning and construction cost estimates, easement challenges, and and next steps. The the original. The original feasibility study looked at bringing a trail from the Linfield town line all the way to Wilmington um, and actually Route 62 in Wilmington. Um, and um, it just, it was just too, way too much to do in, in, in one phase. So the, the phases have been scaled way back. Um, and, and that's why uh, we're, we're not going any further. We're not proposing to go any further than uh, Chestnut Street um, in, in this phase of the project. Um, the, uh, one of the key features of, of um, our approach is that the MassDOT, the state, would pay, would pay for the vast majority of the construction costs. Actually, almost, they would pay for 100% of the construction costs. The burden on the town is to pay for design and permitting. Um, and so we've, we're going very carefully in making sure that MassDOT's involved in all the stages of our planning um, we've submitted uh, the project initiation form. They've issued a project number. That certainly doesn't mean it's a done deal. All it means is that MassDOT sort of supports the project in general. Um, and um, um, assuming that, that all the planning is done and all the property issues are worked out, then, then MassDOT would grant the, grant the project and, and construction would begin at some point in the future, which most likely would be no earlier than the end of this decade. Um, um, the uh, oh. okay. um, the as I said, Linfield is actively looking to um, improve uh, their their section of trail. 
um, uh, to, the, to the east of the North Reading section. They commissioned a study with the MAPC, which is the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, um, a year or so ago, uh, where the four towns, including North Reading, participated uh, to sort of come up with a vision for how all these towns and the various trails linking these towns uh, would, would fit together. Um, so why does the trail, why does this trail uh, make sense uh, for North Reading? Well, it's a creation of a new town amenity, providing recreational facilities for all residents. And uh, potentially, there are some studies that say that, that it leads to increased property values. There's, there's certainly no evidence that it leads to decreased property values. For an eventual investment of under $2 million, less whatever grants we may receive, the state will cover $9.5 million of construction costs, um, sub again, subject to MassDOT approving the project. Um, the, uh, it, it's likely, um, it's almost a certainty that the 9.5 million that we estimated um, about six or eight months ago is, is conservative. Um, MassDOT thought it was conservative, but the, the, the amount doesn't seem to concern them. Um, uh, there would be, the, 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 the trail itself would be, um, would be paved. It would be built so that it could take um, light emergency vehicles. Um, the bridges would be able to take light emergency vehicles. It would not be for traffic, um, but th these are these are sturdy, um, sturdy superstructures. Um, and that bridge, there would be a bridge connecting Elm Street, as I said, that parking area, into into Riverwoods, um, and there would be th that new bridge from the Park Street Route 62 from the opposite the playing fields to Ipswich River Park. There's two and a half, two to two and a half uh, miles of uh, handicapped accessible trail. The, again, about 35% of that would be in the woods and 65% of it would be on, um, on enhanced sidewalks. Um, from the existing unimproved trails within Willis Woods on the, on, on the Linfield side, um, there would be connections um, today to Independence Greenway um, again, not, it's not going to necessarily be paved uh, paved trail, but but there are paths and, um, um, and and certainly substantial trails so that it is possible to to walk or or, or, or mountain bike um, between the between the areas. Um, and uh, one thing is, we, several years ago, I participated and a number of people did participate uh, throughout the town in um, creating a North Reading open space recreation plan, and one of the top objectives of the open space recreation plan was more trails uh, within the town. So the, this, this rail trail sort of goes, goes towards um, that, that purpose. Um, the, 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 our, our trail, the, the North Reading Trail, um, would play into the greater Boston, to, the border to Boston trail network. Um, that's one of the reasons why MassDOT is interested in it. They, they have this vision of trying to connect um, all the trails in Greater Boston, and they're trying to get further west. They'd like to get all the way to Lowell, which there's, there's a, the rail bed actually did at one time go to Lowell, um, but uh, it'll be a challenge. But they see our piece as being a key piece to that challenge. Um, so one other point, the MassDOT's approval for the North Reading portion of the trail is not dependent on any other town. It's only dependent on, on North Reading meeting, um, meeting certain requirements within the town of North Reading. Border to Boston Trail Network, um, it's a work in process, progress, but you, you, can, you can pretty much bicycle from today um, from uh, the New Hampshire border all the way to North Station. Willis Woods is what Linfield's calling its section um, you can see that it's, it's um, North Reading is over here to the left, um, and the Bostic plant and uh, Independence Greenway here to the right. The Main, Main Street is sort of right here, and Main Street Linfield is right here. It's a huge area, largely largely owned by the Linfield Center Water District, so it's their source of it's part it's one of their sources of water, um, and it had been closed to the public. Uh, the center water district really didn't want people in there, but there's been a change of thought about that. And over the last year or so, a couple years, 
um, Linfield has moved to maybe potentially make this all conservation land and open this up to um, public. So even now, whereas before it was no trespassing, it, it, it's now embraced by the, t the town of Linfield that people can come in there and, and walk through their, through their um, trails. So, so here's, here's the map of um, how the trail is envisaged today. Um, it's, it's evolved a lot over the last two or three months. Um, as I said, it, originally, you know, we had thought we could um, run the trail sort of along the rail bed and then sort of near, sort of near the rail bed um, to get there. It was just too complicated. And so the proposal now is to take it on sidewalks. This little pink area here is just a holding place. Um, um, uh, we, we, we do not have permission to, to build there, um, and we may not get permission to build there. So we're in conversations with other, other, other property owners that abut the trail, and um, we're hopeful that um, when the time comes, um, we can uh, reach, a, reach a, an accommodation with, with other, with other uh, e property holders from whom we could get an easement. Um, the trail, depending on, on where the trail actually connects into, uh, into the woods, the, 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 the sidewalks could come down Apple Tree Lane, or, or they could come down Englewood Lane to Park Street. Um, so this, is, this, this will be determined in the next phase, which is the planning phase. Um, and then the, 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 the sidewalks would run along Park Street. Um, and uh, currently, there are no sidewalks in that section of Park Street, so th th this would be new. Um, would come up to Mount Vernon, and then there would be sidewalks, a sidewalk down the whole length of Mount Vernon. The end of Mount Vernon already has a sidewalk. These sidewalks would probably be wider. Exactly how wide, I, I, I don't know, but they, they'd be, they, are, they would be wider than a normal sidewalk. Would come down to Haverhill Street, um, and then it would take a right on Haverhill Street and would connect to the, it would probably be a connection actually onto the Park Street Bridge itself to keep it on town land. Um, it would run very close to the river um, so as to stay on town land. Um, this little red section, uh, we've had conversations with uh, the, the, the owner and he's generally amenable. We certainly don't have an agreement, but generally amenable to um, allowing an easement on his property. And then we would connect to Ipswich River Park. And from Ipswich River Park on, it's all town land. So there's the bridge, there's, it, there's the park itself, there's the trail that goes to that abandoned um, trestle bridge and on through North Parish Park. So there you, you can see the, 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 the connection that would be made at, um, at Haverhill Street. Um, so that this little property here that, that is, not, it, it, at least according to town maps, um, it's showing that the town owns this piece of property here. So we would stay on, the green line would stay on the town property and then cross. Now, whether the trail cuts this way, the trail might actually cut cl closer and run, run a little closer to the, um, to, to the, to the fence. So the, the business is up here. The business is actually built on the old rail bed. And this is all marsh down here in this lower level. Costs and challenges. So there's a series of things that North Reading does need to pursue and, and pay for before the, the state would step in and, um, and take over. The next phase that we'd be looking for funding is the initial planning phase. They, they, MassDOT calls that the 25% phase. Um, now, we have estimates from the consultant that this would cost $850,000. Um, we've applied for a half a million dollar grant that would offset that $850,000. We could get the half million, we could get zero or, 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 or some number in between. Uh, hopefully we'll learn about that within the next month or so. So when we go to town meeting, we can present a, a, a net figure on, on what the cost would be. Um, there are, where once the 25% design phase is done, um, it would determine where the location of the trail should go. The, 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 the consultants would have conversation with the property owners um, as to what accommodations would be needed to um, facilitate an easement. And, and, and the exact 
the exact route um, would be nailed down. And following that, b before we go into the 75% the, the final design is when, we, when the town would need to acquire formal title to the, to the easements. And um, then, then the final stage, this, what they call, the, the state calls the 75% design phase, is estimated to cost another $850,000, um, uh, less whatever grants might be available at, at, at that time. Um, and um, MassDOT works very closely, much more closely with that part of the process. Um, they're much more involved with the, the consultants at that stage because um, that, that, that stage of planning has to be make it shovel ready so that, um, that when it's done, MassDOT just takes that plan and brings in the, brings in the bulldozers. So the, the time frame is not fast. I mean, it, if, if, we, if, we, if we got, say, funding for the $850,000 in October, it would, it would probably take a year and a half just to get through that, that uh, initial design phase. Easement negotiations and getting, getting everything set for the next design phase could easily take another two or three, two years. Um, and then even once you have everything all done and you get to the 75, the 70, and MassDOT said you're fine, MassDOT still has to fit it into their construction schedule, um, uh, which could be 2030, could, could be whenever. So this isn't something that's, that's, that's about to happen tomorrow. All right, let's go through some of the, the frequently asked questions before, and then when I'm done, we can open it up to, to your questions. But maybe some of your questions, these are, these are questions that um, we've, we've heard in, uh, in some of our other presentations to the select board and, and just general conversation. Bill? Yes. So we'll do this one by one, though. Yes. OK. If, do, mean, do you if, want a question? If there's, if there's other discussion, after you've asked the question and asked and answered. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll do this. I'll give, I'll give the response that, that's, been, that's been written here. And then if, if people want to ask a question about it, um, we, we can do that. I've, I've heard that the proposed trail would cross many residents' yards. Is this true? That was true um, three or four, three month, two or three months ago, but we've, re, we've rerouted the trail. So the trail route as currently planned would cross no more than two private parcels. Um, and in only one case is that parcel uh, a, a person's yard. Um, and um, there would be no plans to put um, a trail through a yard unless there was already an existing easement um, or um, there, there was permission. Yes. Uh, going, so they can hear cable. <laughs> uh, going down uh, Park Street and Mount Vernon Street, okay? You're talking about widening, wi installing sidewalks, and they're going to be wider than what is there. Are you going to take away part of the road, or are you going to take away the front yards of homes? It would be on town-owned land. It would, it would, the, whatever would be built would be built on... The, um, the the road abutments. It wouldn't be on private land. Now it's it's it, it is possible that there are there are properties where there could have been a fence or something or retaining walls placed um, on the on the on the town on the town land, and surveyors would have to come in and figure out exactly where those where where the, where the town land ends and where the personal pers the private property begins. All right, because both of those roads are very narrow. And and windy, right? Yeah, no, it's it's true. And and but the goal is not to take any property for the sidewalks. Um, it, it's to keep it on the whatever the road abutment currently exists. Um, so if you have a narrow road at Mount Vernon Street, how do you do something other than take part of that road? There, was, there, there are abutments to the road. I mean, what, Mount Vernon Street has been widened somewhat recently, so it is, it is possible the road might, the, 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 the actual drivable part of the road might become a little narrower. That's what has to be done during the, the planning phase. Um, but there's still abutments beyond where the road is even today, this town-owned land. It would take, we'd have to get, a, the survey crew would have to come in and determine exactly where the town land is 
and where, where the private properties begin. But there's no plan on taking any property. I'm more concerned with the road itself and whether we can actually drive down it. I certainly don't want a one-way road. No, no, <clears throat> no, and that's why we, we get, we have, we have, we'll have a design, the design people will come in and, and determine what's feasible and what's not. Two, qu two questions or comments? That's only, that's, that's only for TV. So uh, first of all, are there not already set in regulation minimum widths for roads? Uh, you're asking the wrong person, I don't know. There are. Secondly, what's the usual amount of land that is over the edge of the road that the town owns that people are often unawares of? I think it would it, it, it probably depend. Say it, sir, six feet is, so that six feet over the edge of the road is typically right. the length reasonable. of the town. And there are minimums that the state requires for uh -huh. the width of a secondary road. Yes, sir. So regulation, would already be in place that would protect any actions that go above and beyond what the state or the town permit. Okay. Correct? Yes, it, this is all governed by, it's governed by what the town owns and it's governed by regulation, yes. You know, everything would be compliant. Anyone else? Mastod wouldn't, um, Mastod isn't gonna fund anything that's not compliant. Ken. I'm just to expand on that a little bit that there's obviously and it someone has to know what that extension is off the side of the road that the town owns in order to put in a sidewalk correct yes do we know what it is? No, I have to have. Um, it's going to have. I mean, I know what it generally is. Okay. I mean, you can look about at you can look at maps. Is, you can look at maps and see it, but the yeah. maps aren't necessarily accurate. And I mean, you can look at individual titles, and 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 the title would tell you it goes 100 feet from here and 100 feet there. But you need a surveyor to come in and actually figure it out. To figure out exactly where it is, but there is there should be a standard where a town wants to put in a sidewalk. Yeah. How much their easement is allowed yes. from the side of the road. Yes. Okay. All right. We don't yes. know what that is, though. I, I, I do not, and, and nor do we know exactly how wide these, these, these sidewalks would probably be wider than a normal sidewalk. Okay. That was my next question, yeah. too. How, and, and does, does DOT have a say in how wide these sidewalks have to be in order for it to be part of yes. this trail? Yes. And I mean, there's stand, you know there, are, there, are standard, there are standards for what the trail, what, a, what these tr so-called trails that run along the roads are. And um, so, but one thing to keep in mind is that there's land on both sides of the road. And um, if, if, if it was just up to North Reading, North Reading isn't gonna spend the money to shift the road, but MassDOT will shift the road. So, um, so for instance, on, on Mount Vernon Street, there's, there's one property. The, the, the trail would probably run um, on the south side of Mount Vernon Street. There's, there's, more, there's more room on the south side than there is on the north side. But there is one property that's very close to the road on Mount Vernon. But on the opposite side of the street, there's actually a, there's, there's more land. So whether, who owns it, who doesn't own it, the, the, the road could be shifted um, so, to, so as not to incringe on, on, the, on the narrow side. On the opposite side. On the opposite I, side. I understand that, but so we're still going back to the original problems we had months ago about taking people's property, because that's exactly what- I mean, we're not looking to take anybody's property- No, I understand property you're not sidewalk. looking to, but in order to shift a street and add sidewalks to it, you're gonna have to take someone's property. We'll take a walk down, down Park Street. There's nowhere to go except take people's property. Before, before you go, just I just want to remind folks, okay? This we we voted not to put this on the warrant article 
June town meeting right. so that we had more time to look into it. Before we've done, there's a lot more investigating to be done. So this is, we wanted to put this first. So how I'm interpreting this is you're pointing out this is a concern. Right. This is something that we're going to look into the specifics of, okay? Right, we need so, more facts. So, yeah. I mean, whether or not that's going to work has to be looked into. Understood. And I just want to make that clear. We're not going to decide that tonight. Right. And it, and it will be our job to take and look at the more specifics of that that's been pointed out, okay? Did you go? Yep. So, uh, I was just imagine. From a, from a transparency point of view, and I'm going to keep talking about this. So, yes, it's town-owned land, but a lot of people don't realize their piece of it is oh. town-owned land. Yep. So be more transparent with that piece of this, please, that, yes, it's town-owned land, but you're taking part of their lawn, okay? Yep. Yep. Is, second second true. point is true. the existing easement piece you put up there. Is that a town access easement, or is that a no, private it, easement? It would be, you know, it would be... There is an easement. Well, it says it's either an existing yeah. easement or a willing property owner. So I know I'm not a willing property owner. Right. So I, this existing easement, is that for town use? I mean, you know? not at the moment, no. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, these are, <clears throat> sorry, these are terrific questions and thanks. Uh, I, I don't know a lot about this project, so this is, this is great to hear. Uh, I realize sidewalks sidewalks are challenging. I appreciate all that the Land Use Commission has done to uh, think about how to do this. Uh, sidewalks sidewalks are challenging, but they're also an amenity. I know when my, they came into my neighborhood or behind my neighborhood, uh, it just makes it that much more livable. It's an important part of livability, including for disabled people. And I'm wondering if you've had uh, communication with the Commission on Disabilities, the town's commission, and, uh, you know, to talk about about access issues that the sidewalks might improve. I mean, that's, that's an excellent point. I mean, the, the entire trail will be handicapped accessible. So that's one of the advantages of doing dealing with MassDOT. Um, th so even the bridges that span the, the Ipswich, and um, they're, they're going to be at a grade that, that's wheelchair, wheelchair um, accessible. Um, I've not had direct contact with with anybody at the town about the subject, but but it, it's it's what you said is spot on. Um, I mean, I, I, people love sidewalks. I have a sidewalk in front of my house, and just, I'm I'm on the part of I live on the section of Park Street that has sidewalks, and people are constantly walking down those sidewalks, and I suspect that pe people are walking on Mount Vernon and they're walking on the section of Park Street right now that doesn't have sidewalks. And I, these are things that would get a great deal of use. Um, and yes, they don't come without some pain. I, I, I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything. I, I, we're, I'm perfectly aware, we're all perfectly aware that there are challenges here. All right, can we move up? All right. Um, One more question. Another question? I, I live on Winter Street, and when they put the sidewalks in, they took my land, mm -hmm. put up a stupid wall, and took down three of my trees. So those of you who live close to the road, you're going to be falling out your door and getting run over. I, I hear you. Um, Yo, another one? One, one, Yo, one more. Another question. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, has the term prescriptive easement come up where people have been using uh, like their driveway is so short that it comes in to drive into town land and they've been using that for decades where are they going to park I, I mean it, it, that's that would have to be part of the plan this there's an there are a lot of issues and they're not going to get resolved in this phase of the project. A lot of those issues would need to be addressed during the planning phase when you would bring in surveyors and you'd bring in legal counsel. And I mean, it's, it, it, it's a stage of the project to figure all those things out. No one's saying that we don't need to figure those things out. They, and this is only the 25% design phase. It's the beginning. It's the first design phase to figure out 
you know, where do we, how, how, what do we need to do to build this thing? And what you're saying is clearly one of the things we need to do to build these things. Excuse me, what is your firm's name? Prescriptive. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. Okay. I mean, it's uh, on to sort the next of like. Question. Oh yeah, the, the, yeah. Rich was pointing out that that the we we have to go to town meeting for the money to for the twenty five percent funding. If there are any if there are any easements that need to be acquired, that would probably that would take a town vote, and then it would take another town vote to do the to do the seventy five percent, the seventy five percent. So it it's not like. It's, this thing isn't just going to happen. This thing's not going to get rammed down anybody's throat. The town will have at least three opportunities to vote the thing down. Okay, next question. Uh, even if the trail would not cross yards, it will certainly abut many properties and towns. What will be done to protect abutters from pedestrian and bicycle traffic on the trail? All right, so I think we have to um, differentiate between sidewalks and what's in the woods. The sidewalks. Sidewalks are sidewalks. Sidewalks are in the front of people's property. If they want a fence from the sidewalk, they're going to have to put up a fence. I mean, the, the, if, if there's da any damage done to the property during the building of the sidewalk, then, then the state will, will, will f remedy whatever damages are done to the property. But there aren't going to be fences or plantings on the sidewalk. However, if properties abut um, sections of the trail that are in the woods, um, there's one or two properties that abut that section by North Parish Park, um, there are there are pr some properties that would abut the trail, though distantly, um, in in the in the existing rail bed, sort of that's over towards Linfield. Um, there would be plantings. There can be the, the state would build fences. Um, there would be barriers um, worked out with the homeowners to try to create satisfaction that there's some partition between the trail, the backyards of these people, and and the trail. Some of the trail will be constructed in wetlands. Uh, what will be done to protect these areas? You know, all local, state, and federal wetland rules, regulations are going to have to be strictly, strictly followed. The same, same rules apply to building the trail as they do to a home or a business owner or putting in a, a public road. Um, the North Reading Conservation Commission, Committee um, will need to approve the construction plan. Bridges and boardwalks, um, there's a, there's a there's a design, a standard design for these bridges and boardwalks that go through wetlands um, so as to do minimal disturbance to the wetlands. Basically, they put down um, fairly large pilings, but they're, very, they're spaced very far apart. So they use, they use more, the boardwalks and the bridges are, have more of a structural component to them because the, the supports are, are, um, are much further apart. And one of the um, highest cost components of the 25% design phase is um, a crew has to come in and they have to do drillings in, in the various wetland areas and where the, where the bridges are going to be anchored to, to figure out where bedrock is and how deep they have to go with the, uh, with, with the supports. Um, so uh, making this trail um, minimal damage and compliant with wet, re wetland regulations is, 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 is really a, a critical part. Anyone have a question on that? Yes. When will conservation get involved with this? Does that happen after the initial phase that they give you the okay to go into the wetlands? And yeah, it, I mean, I think we'll, we'll, we'll probably meet with conservation in the next few months. So part of our process, land utilization committee's process, okay? At our last meeting, we sat down to reevaluate. Some of you were involved zoom wise and whatever we sat down and went over what's mapped out what the best way we could handle this what groups do we have to meet with okay so conservation community planning okay um you know you're, we're gonna we, we've also talked about and it'll come up in one of these frequently asked questions in a minute but you know talking to uh the uh safety officers and whatnot we will be meeting with the different groups in the next couple of months to get their input, get them up to speed with what it is and see what we can get for feedback from them, okay? 
And I assume, that, I assume, I don't know for sure, but I would think part of the process of the planning when the consultants come in, um, they would have, they would come up with a, a, a tentative proposal for how to um, remediate wetland um, portions of the trail. Um, they should have be having discussions with the North Reading um, Conservation Commission as well as, as people in the state very early on so that this thing, um, everybody knows what's happening and if they have concerns that, that uh, the remediation can be put in right at the early start. What if conservation says no? I mean, generally speaking, from Massachusetts laws, you're only allowed to go through protected wetlands if it's considered for the public good. So I don't know if this is considered a gas line or a power line or something to alleviate flooding. And other things, it sounds like it's very much a recreational trail. Um, re recreational trails go through wetlands all the time. The, 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 con the, cons the consultants that I'm, I'm working on build these trails all the time. So there, there are ways of building these things, and the state, the state approves them, and, and they get through conservation commissions all the time. So if the town votes to spend a million dollars or so, I know it's only 850 or whatever, and you are not able to acquire easements through negotiations or private property through negotiations, what will happen to the project at that point? Does the project drop and we spent a million dollars and we no longer have a trail? That's not on the list of questions. We should stay with the PowerPoint. It is part of the first question. Um, well, first of all, we're not asking for a million, but I mean, it's, it's, it's a substantial amount. Okay. Hopefully we get a grant so it's even, it's even, it's even For less. the last two years, I've told the LUC I'm not interested in giving my private property, yet it's still on the list as a temporary marker, and it's still mentioned up here as one of the private properties. I've said no. If the town votes to spend $1 million to go with this plan, and I still say no, what is the plan for the town or the LUC at that point? To either drop the project or forcefully take land, correct? That would be the choice at that time, yes. Thank you. Yeah, the, no sugar coating it, that's, that is, that's the situation. It always has been. So we're talking eminent domain. I mean, we're not, we're, the, the plan is not to do eminent domain. The, the plan is to try to um, work things out with homeowners. At this time, there are no plans and they are trying to, at this time, there's no plans for eminent domain. I mean, that's not anything that, and again, part of the, as, as far as, um, you know, well, your, your statement about conservation, that's why we'll meet with conservation before this, you know, before we go to town meeting, you know, we'll have an idea of what conservation's thoughts on this are, okay? And again, there are many, rail trails, walking trails, bike trails that go through wetlands. They have designed ways that they can do that without impacting. But the idea for doing this whole process is not so we can say, let's just approve all this money to spend so somebody can point out three or four roadblocks that are never gonna get fixed, okay? I mean, we're trying to get that settled with these processes, okay? So, yes, up back. Why the delay in contacting conservation? Say we take the proper time. It seems like early on, you know, at least taking their calls. You know, when I hear bulldozers in the same sense with white man's conservation, I have to turn. Well, the precedent they've had is done successfully every year. Yeah, the. There's a, there's a sequence to it. Right now, we have a path. We have a general path for the trail. We don't have a specific path, okay. nor do we have a design that's even been started on the trail. I don't. I don't believe we've got bulldozers going in So, of the 35 percent that would that you state as woods, what percentage of that would you say is wetlands or conservation? I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, there's there's I mean, th th there's going to be several bridges that span the Ipswich River. So, um, I mean, those br I, 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 the bridges will have footings in the wetlands. There are ways of building these footings. They do this all the time. There are ways of building bridge footings that don't disturb the wetlands. There are, there are laws that, that 
that determine exactly how big these footings can be, how fast, how far apart they can be. And this would all be done in compliance with all the laws. So we want to go to, we want to give conservation a heads up, but I have nothing for them to react to. They need a plan. They need something that they can say, just like if you were building a home and you had an architect's rendering of, 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 of your property. And I, I, I've listened to the, and they, and they ask, okay, so the house takes up what percentage of, of, of the land? How much of the land is still going to be permeable with, for, for rain? Da, 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 da. There's, there's all these different issues that they, they have to look at a rendering to come up with a conclusion. And, you know, that's the next phase. So while we're giving them a heads up, they, they're not going to have anything to react to until we finish the 25% design phase. Yes. Yeah, first. I got one. I can't talk. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, look, just for the record, Phil, you, you know, yeah, yeah. I live right across the street. <laughs> Next and to my neighbor. I have, a, I have a common driveway with my neighbor. Yeah. I'm 600 feet back off the road. And uh, I went to an engineering firm to come up with a plan for my own driveway, my uh -huh. own separate driveway on my property. I spent over $1,000 for that plan. Mm -hmm. This is a number of years ago, too. Yep. Yep. And it was instantly shut down at a CONCOM meeting. Yep. Absolutely not. So... There's an indication of right, right. What the no, com is that. Yeah, no, I, but you can't build a road in a wetland. You can build a, a walkway. This was not a road. This is a driveway, a private but driveway. But it, it, these are going to be these are going to be. And, and again, walks. I had to have these are going to be bridges, essentially. Even that's where what it's I had, flat. That's exactly what I needed. The, the, a these bridge. will be bridges. Mm -hmm. I can. Why we will meet with conservation. Before we go to town meeting, I'm just letting you know that Con Com. I mean, Drew, the, the other thing to keep in mind the cost of building these, these bridges or the boardwalks is something like $2,000 a foot. You know, so, you know, the average homeowner isn't going to spend $2,000 a foot for this kind of boardwalk. My project was $60,000. Something like this. I would have spent it, but the CONCOM said no. I, 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 yeah. All right. Um, Wait, we have one more. Another question? Okay. I guess I'm slightly confused here. I'm trying to figure out, are we still in the aspect of the feasibility study, that which, which most of us have seen the same presentation three times? Yes. Minus a couple. Yes. Now, You've, you've gone back and forth several times, Phil. You've spoken to these people, but we can't speak to these people. I think if you go who, back, who, who, you spoke to Masonic Lodge, and you have their blessing to go through. That's what you, that's what you said. We did, but we're not, we're not going that you far. Know, the trail isn't going like, to go. Like one of the it, gentlemen. It, it's not going to go there. They've, they've told you and they've asked, we want to be removed off of this, and for some reason it doesn't come off. Um, are, are we a biased neutral party here, Phil, or is this just a P, a pet P, pet project of somebody's that we're going to push this through? You know, we, we have overwhelming concerns that you seem to know a cost on a bridge and how wide they are, but you don't know the impact of what a road is going to be going down Mount Vernon or Park Street. You don't know that. You know, you, you say that, you know, we, we can't go any further and speak to conservation because we don't know. But you do know, you mentioned earlier, there's going to be four bridges up to 900 feet long. You know, so how, out of the four bridges, how much out of the 5,500 square feet, you know, of a mile is it going to be? You've also said that you're, you're saying 35 percent, just, just to educate us, you're saying up to 35 percent is going to be in the woods. I think you, you, you've skewed that to your side quite a bit that's through the woods. I think it really comes out to a little bit over 14%. No, no. I mean, let's go. If you, if you want to go, I can show you, you, I, I can show I, you on the map I'm, I'm where it is. I'm trying to find out, is this something that you folks are presenting to us or you're asking us that, that, said, that we want to go beginning. forward? Okay. And, and you know directly that there have been changes made mm -hmm. based on 
feedback. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've gotten information from several of you that have given us suggestions as to what to do, and we've gone into that. So I've already said we're going to conservation before we go to town meeting. At least we'll get some sort of idea. I can't tell you that what they're going to say if they get a plan put in front of them differently, but at least we can show where we're looking to go and see what, again, we'll get a sense of where they're at with it. But shouldn't that sense have been asked prior to asking us for $850,000? I know potentially there's grants and whatnot, but, not, but, but, again, but just, ju just to go to conservation. And going we are going to go to conservation. Okay. It is going to be done before we ask you for eight. We are going to talk to them before we ask you for eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, this is the process. As I said, we're starting here. We're starting with what you folks are telling us are your concerns, mm -hmm. and we are going to work on. It. Okay, um, Rita. Thank you. Rita Mullen, uh, Recreation and Land Utilization Committee. I've been on recreation for over 40 something years and in the 40 years we probably had, at the time, maybe seven different groups, six or seven groups that approached us about bike paths. And to be quite honest with you, with the members that we had in recreation over the years, we had people that said they were interested, but everybody knew bike path was a, a big number. It was easy to put in soccer fields, baseball fields, uh, anything else that people wanted because we were used to doing that. Everybody knew, knows something about soccer, baseball, and it can be done. When the paths came along, it always seemed like a major project. And to be honest with you, we never had enough uh, people on the committee that were going to study it or do it. And Bill was a member of conservation one time, and Bill was on LUC when a couple of groups came before us and asked for bike paths. And there were, it always was something that seemed like a major project to tackle. When Phil came on uh, on LUC, he asked about bike paths and had asked before that. And I said, this would be a great place to start, either recreation or LUC. You have some knowledge on it. And to be quite honest with you, in two years, he did more work on it than a lot of the whole committee did recreation in 10 or 15 years on some other projects that we didn't do anything with. The reason that we're here now is two years went by with COVID and very, very little was done on it, but Phil kept doing his homework. So sometimes you have one person that might shine on a committee and work on a project, and other times you have nine people that know everything about baseball and can get a lot of things done. So to defend Phil, which doesn't need any defense, <laughs> he's done the best job he can to this point. We're taking time. We knew we were not ready to come before the town for this last town meeting. We may not be ready for the next town meeting. Uh, Linfield took 30 years to get to the path time that they did a bike path. But the state has a lot of money now, and we are one of the towns that are in the middle. So they are willing to offer a lot of money to look at a project that we've done before. We are not going before a town meeting until we have worked out everything. We spent seven years building LU, uh, the uh, Ipswich River Park that a lot of people didn't know anything about, but there were nine members on LUC that worked for seven years to get to the point to bring it to the town. A lot of people were against it in the beginning because they felt a lot of things were gonna uh, happen if this happened. When it went to town meeting and was voted on, it was voted 300 something to one to, to work on it. So all we're asking is you, you give us the time and the, uh, to keep coming forward. It's, you don't see nine other members jumping up answering every question because to be honest with you, Phil is the one that's done most of the work, met with DOT, met, met with the state. It is, if you call it a pet project, if there wasn't a pet project, by everybody else. You wouldn't have a little league field, a soccer field. You wouldn't have high school extra uh, special events that are going on. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, everything was done because somebody felt they knew something about it. So for that reason, and I had this discussion with recreation last night, a lot of people don't know anything about bike paths, paths or much of it, and it's easy to be afraid of something we don't know. We're trying to educate everybody as much as we can. Questions we don't have, we're certainly coming back to them. What Phil said is true with conservation. We have certainly had discussions with the people on conservation, different people on conservation, and the agents over the years. They absolutely, if anybody knows anything about cons conservation, a lot of people on conservation and recreation, of course, love trails and bike paths. We may not, we may decide we don't want it, but at least give us the opportunity to look into it. We're trying to find any, every way that we can go around people's properties so we don't talk about it. 
you know, talk about taking it by eminent domain or anything like that. We don't want to have to do that. So we're trying to make, every time something comes up, we go and make a change. But for seven years, most people didn't hear anything about LUC and Ipswich River Park unless you knew somebody on the committee. So please don't think that we have been trying to hide things from anybody because we're not. The pet project is doing the best thing we can for the citizens of North Reading and trying to help them as best we can. I hope that answers you. The, the question keeps coming up on the um, the conservation. Why uh, LUC and Phil got these answers to figure out what we can do with this conservation? Because conservation is a big issue. Um, not only conservation, we got bylaws that you can only do certain things, and that's what this gentleman said. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't these questions, you know, and this is not the first time this question came up. My question is, why did we wait, and we got to wait to go to conservation? Why can't we get these answers beforehand? And then I didn't hear anybody say that DEP, which is the Depart Department of Environmental Protection, was mentioned anywhere with this. They're, they're, need to, they're going to be notified. I'm sure they're going to be notified. There was no mention of that. So I don't understand, Phil, why we're not getting these answers for all these people. And you expect us as, as people to spend 850000 maybe another 850000 and we still don't have any answers as far as the answers is concerned. We're not asking you to spend $850,000. We're asking you to tell us what your concerns are so that we can then look into those before we ask you to spend $850,000. Okay, that's what I'm trying to We're not going to, you know. Ian, so why, why went I'm going to see conservation before. We why wasn't it done, uh, Ken? I don't understand. Why was this not done? Because a lot, a lot of these questions would have been eliminated today. Why wasn't it done? Why? Because yeah. Quite frankly, you know, in, in all honesty, I think that the reason that we, we as a committee voted to withdraw it from June town meeting was because we realized that we hadn't gotten all the homework done that we should have. And I mean, I can blame what the whole world is and it's COVID, you know, that meetings weren't being held and whatnot. But aside from that, again, it's really just pointing out, you know, some people never heard of land utilization committee before. <clears throat> some of us have been on a land utilization committee for over 20 years because it was created for answer to a pie. Okay. We know how to do projects. This one we we're not as thorough with as we were happy about. So when questions came up, we regrouped. This is the byproduct of our regroup. Okay. So if we want to go back and revamp what wasn't done in April, in March, in May, we can we can spend the rest of the evening doing that. What we're doing here is what do we do going forward, okay? People wanted a hearing, we're having a hearing. We're happy to have a hearing, okay? And and that's what we want. Tell us what you, you know, people said we weren't listening to anyone. We're listening, okay? And I'm not trying to fight, but I just don't see how it's going to be productive to ask us why it wasn't done already, okay? It wasn't done already. There were a lot of things. And the only reason that you stopped it before you were going to town meeting to get eight hundred fifty thousand dollars approved, so th that's that was done at the last minute that you would draw your article. So don't say none of it was done. It was done, but the point is that some of the stuff from the first meeting that this came up, it should have been done. That's it. Just a brief comment. As Sergio brought up about conservation, local con conservation has jurisdiction. But the DEP is, is going to be, be probably have the final say in this. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. The state? The, just 
be, be aware the grants that we get come from DEP. Or excuse yeah. me, they come from DCR. But, but DEP will be involved. You're right. DEP, DEP will be critical. Right. And so I, I guess my point being, no matter what the local conservation chooses to do, the DEP is actually probably going to have the final say on this project, which is, the, which is, the, which is who's funding it, is, is the state. Yes. So, so if they want to bypass certain regulations, of, they can do it. Yes. I mean, I don't think it. Well, I mean, we're talking about the Ipswich River. And so does that mean they have to be in compliance with all the requirements of the Rivers Act, like everybody else in this room? Or this I, one has to be? That, it's been my assumption that, that this project has to comply with the same regulations that any construction project would have to comply with. Okay, this should prove to be interesting, I guess. Then. Thank you. We have? Hey, next question. Sorry, you. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. We want to make sure the TV audience gets to appreciate your comments. Yeah. I, oh, wow, that's heavy. Can you hear me? I don't know why the town of North Reading always has to be the one that bails everybody out when there's a problem. And why we would want to pr provide for the towns of Wakefield, Melrose, Reading, Linfield, Middleton, everybody else to come to, uh, come to our town and walk around in our trails. I don't think it's proper, number one, for the board to entertain that kind of emotion. But um, when the town is raising and appropriating $14 million to spend on something. It's, you can spend it on something a lot better than a walking trail. And it's just, just, just like we're opening the whole town up. Everybody can come up and see our lovely woods. You even told me when you before. I, I'm Bill Smith, by the way. I own the property on Elm Street. That's been a bone of contention forever. And um, at one time, when I was 18 or 20 years old, I started saving my money. I, I ended up with 112 acres of land down there on Elm Street. 112 acres. Town of Linfield wanted to build a reservoir. Will you sell us 25 acres? And I agreed to. They never built the reservoir. They got a stump dump down there now, and I can't do a thing about it. Now, the, then the next thing that came along is the town of North Reading. After I spent my money buying all the land, the town of North Reading marched in and decided to take 50 acres of my property right out of the middle of the land. And this fellow, fellow here knew, and he said it at the town meeting, that they could, they had no access to get to that 50 acres. We had them surrounded like a bunch of Indians. And it's still been that, that way since 2004, I believe, is when the town took it. But they took the 50 acres, told everybody they were gonna build a high school over there and everything else. They got all the support from the outside towns, uh, the people outside. Don't mind me, I had a problem. Um, but explaining myself. But um, I sat on a lot of boards in this town. I've done an awful lot of stuff for this town. And one thing I never did is lie. They lied at the town meeting, told the town meeting that they had access to that property. When they had none, I told them they had none. They could have cared less. All they were trying to do is stop me from building. And what we were planning on building, if we ever did it, we had no plans really what, what we were going to do because we liked the beauty of the property. North Reading is a pretty town now. They take a dozer, like he said, and rip everything apart. And they says in, in this report, I got the report. This is the whole report from, from the Land Utilization Committee. And in that report, it said it'll take decades to finish the product project. You're gonna have stuff ripped up everywhere and it's gonna make a big mess. And there's no need for us to spend money on something like that when you got roads that are falling completely apart, sidewalks are falling apart, everybody's cars are falling apart, and we're gonna spend and build another road 16 feet wide, four and a half miles. Just think along how long it's gonna to to take to, to do this project. It's crazy. It's out of control. And the grants, just I'll just hit one more thing. Grants get you get nothing but trouble. The state is always ready to jump in and say, oh yeah, we'll give you $5 million and you put 10 more cops on and 16 more firemen and five of these and such for that. But when that, when that grant runs out, you pick up the tab for all those people and all those new bodies and all those new expenses. 
If you build this road, who's going to maintain it? They're having trouble maintaining Ipswich River Park. It's a beautiful place. I support it, by the way, Rita. <laughs> um, it's a spit. Can you get? But anyway, um, I could go on for Call the question. Done for me. Call the question. <laughs> And, but, but anyway, Ken. I think it's a bad idea. We don't know it. It's not feasible. And the question is, they're doing a feasibility study. I haven't heard one word from the LUC saying that whether it's feasible or not feasible. Or what did they do with the report? I ended up getting this report, and I read the thing through and through and through. But that's just because I'm interested in the town. And I'm not here to be in an argument with anybody. I just state my facts, what I think is the right thing to do. And the right thing to do is not to take this project. Thank you. Kenny. Kenny. Can I, I will thank can you I, for one thing, because you did start off by saying that this man said there was no access to the property. And years later, I ha was accused that I said there was access. So thank you for clearing that up. Ken, yeah, can I, I know, and I said that in the presentation. Ken, can, <laughs> so thank you for clearing that up. Ken, can All I? All right, have, Rita. Yeah. Can everybody hear from this mic? No, no, can, no it's only okay. the TV. Can everybody hear? Can everybody hear Phil? Yeah. Except yeah. Bill. Huh? Except Bill. Yeah. Did you? Did, did you hear when he was explaining it? It's up to eight hundred fifty thousand that the town may have to pay, not four million. The town may give us ten. We are not asking just to clear up the facts versus fiction. It is, we are not asking the town for $14 million. We did not steal your land. You put a price on it and the town bought it. You put a price on what you wanted. No, just to, just, uh, no, no, I just, we need, need to make sure that, because it makes people feel like we're gonna steal the, the town. And if anybody wants to make sure that, you know, we're not stealing the land. And it will not go in the answer on finding the facts. You're, uh, Serge, you were absolutely right. There are a lot of things we haven't done. We lost two years from the time this started. There's a lot of work to be done, a lot of questions to be asked. And you know when we were at the selectmen's meeting, we looked you in the face, some of us, and told you, we will make sure we will answer every question, good, bad, or indifferent, if you like it or not, or if you believe us or not. We're not going to tell you things that aren't true, and we're going to make sure that everybody knows everything when we go to town meeting eventually. Okay, can we go on to the next frequently asked question? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, how might the trail impact wildlife currently living on or near the trail? That was asked at the select board meeting. Um, it, it's true there would probably be some temporary disturbance during the construction, um, which wouldn't, the construction itself wouldn't take 10 years. The construction probably would take a, a, a couple of years. Um, and, uh, but again, trails, routinely go through, um, go through the woods and uh, the animals coexist perfectly well with trails. Um, we'll, this is important because we, we, this is often called a bike trail. Um, it's been called a recreational trail and it's been called a rail trail. Um, will the rail trail, will this trail be used primarily for bicycles? And my guess is it probably won't. It's, it's, there are sections of it um, in, in river woods that lend itself to, to bicycling or mountain bikes. There are mountain bikes in there today. Um, but um, I think the primary use um, of the trail would be for children, would be for walkers, would be for runners. Um, cyclists would be welcome. Um, it's been asked whether this on the, on, the, on the sidewalk sections, which most likely would be about eight feet of, eight feet across. They, I don't know. Again, I don't know exactly. I don't know if we maybe if we could make them six feet. I, I would think it'd be great, but they might be eight feet, and they might it might be twelve feet um, in the woods. Um, uh, would the cyclists on the, where there are sidewalks would they be riding on the sidewalks? My guess is that adult cyclists would probably be riding in the street. They'd probably be more comfortable. They could ride on the sidewalks, but the sidewalks are probably for children and, and, and walkers. Anything concerning wildlife? Um, do we go on to the cyclists? Hmm? Are we on the, okay. You want to know? 
the you cyclist sure. section yeah, now? Go ahead. Yes. I have a question yeah. about this, the uh, enforcement. Uh, um, patrols that will, are there patrols envisioned or, or how? Are, and we're, one of the questions that has gone, we've, we've made contact with the chiefs of police and the chiefs of fire. Um, again, North Reading is, if anything, sort of behind the times and building trails. The, the, the towns that, that, I mean, Wakefield, Linfield, Middleton, um, uh, Topsfield, Boxford, these are towns that all have trails today. Um, you know, they're, they're decades ahead of where, where we are. Um, rail trails have been in Mass trails have been in fact in Massachusetts for, for a generation now. So there's, there's, an, there's a lot of history in terms of safety on these trails and the, and the, the crime on trails, while they're not crime fee, they're not crime free, they generally would um, resemble the crime level that would exist in the neighborhoods and the, in, the, in the town as a whole. So we've asked, this, we've asked the police chief to reach out to the other towns that have trails, um, find out what their feeling is, and then we'll, once he's done, he said he, didn't, he wouldn't have it ready for this meeting today, but he'll have it, he'll have it shortly, and, um, and, and we'll make sure that, that both the fire chief and the police chief are, are comfortable. I mean, I will say that one of the reasons why um, the area of Riverwoods is so extensively used by ATVs is because there's, there's, there's no public in there. It's, it's basically, it's so hard to get into um, that they're willing to trespass on other people's land today to get in there, and, and they're in there by themselves. When we build this, when we build the the the, 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 the rail bed, um, police vehicles will actually able to be able to get in there. Ambulances will be able to get in there. Well, I don't think there's any need for it to be patrolled on a regular basis. If there is an emergency, there'll be access into these areas, which really right now is is very very difficult. I have a no, they're in North Reading too. Well, I So it's not really a trail. It's a bicycle road path street. And DOT says right here on their shared use trail that it is for bicycle. It is for bicycles. If, I, You're saying that most adults won't be using it? I, I would suspect that most adults would ride on the street. I would, yeah, I would ride on it. Then you're welcome to ride on it. Okay. But let's include it. Let's be inclusive to all parties because they're even saying here, bicyclists, inline state uh, skaters, and roller sure. skaters can be on that also. No problem. Cross-country okay. skiers. That's cool. Whoever wants to be on it can be on it. Okay. I'm just saying I, I think that what you'd find is there are going to be a lot of walkers. There are going to be inline skaters and walkers. There'll be more of those and ba people with baby carriages and out walking their dogs than there probably will be cyclists. In the back. Serge, can you stand there? Thank you. Yeah, Phil, I just want to say I disagree with uh, your assessment of that you know, when more people will be in there. Right now, you get a lot of dirt bikes, you get a lot of ATVs, but you also get a lot of people partying in there. Um, so you have a, you know, one path coming, coming down to connect 62 to wherever you're going to connect that to. But there's a lot of trails going off of that, you know, just walking trails that people have made as they go through there. And uh, we've had plenty of beer cans. There's a couch in the Ipswich River right now you can see from from uh, one of the one of the bridges there. Um, there's a lot of party and there's a lot of, a lot of riffraff that goes along that might not be directly on the path that you want to do, but it's going to come off all the, right. all the off, off paths that, that come off of that. Yeah. Uh, that. That's a concern of mine because I live down at the end of right, Street right. And, where people are in there now. Yeah. And that doesn't surprise me. I mean, going back generations, the, that bridge over the, um, to the pumping station was open. And pe kids would drive there. Could, you could easily drive your cars in there. There was a shooting range in there at one point, um, and uh, it was only in the last 50, 40, 50 years, 45, 50 years that they, that place has been closed off because it was open to traffic um, until about 45, 50 years ago. So um, 
yeah, I think the goal should be to make that whole area more park-like and um, you know, more like Ipswich. It wouldn't be as formal as Ipswich River Park, but it would be more park-like. I think it would make it more accessible to people who shouldn't be in there and, and doing things they shouldn't be doing, young kids partying, doing whatever they're doing. Uh, I think you're going to give them an easier access well, in there because if you come down there now, there's about 17 no trespassing signs that we've put up. Uh, my neighbors and I have put up to try to keep people out of there. So it's it, it's very clear that it's private property in a lot of that area. And I think that by putting a parking area at the uh, at the you know right on 62 and then giving them an access not just to that trail but all that woods that's back there um, could create. Uh, easier access for for people who shouldn't be uh, in that area. And with three small kids, it's a concern of mine. All right, Rita, want, Rita wants to address that. We've given yeah, us a... so what, some of the things, and you. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. This past winter, I was at the Russell Street end of this trail, mm -hmm. and I tried to go in there with my dog, and there was dog mess everywhere. It was so bad, I couldn't even walk with a dog. So I'm wondering how that gets cleaned up. It's particularly on the sidewalks. A lot of people are going to be walking their dogs. Well, I mean, to and I'm, I have about 200 feet of frontage here that you're going to go down the street. And who's going to clean it up? I mean, a lot of people in this room probably have, I have sidewalks in front of my house today. So if there are people walking. Well, not not like this, you don't. I don't know sidewalks no. sidewalks. Like I'm saying, the trail right now is loaded with that. I've Anybody goes down there, you can just look at it and see it. I, I, That's Linfield. I, 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 I believe what the counter to that is that if it was open to the public to be using on a regular basis, it cuts back. You know, when people are going someplace like you're talking about where you're not supposed to be going into, then you have a tendency to not check it the same way. I mean, it would be the same as any other spot as far as the rules and regulations of cleaning up after your dog. And what well, no, nobody is doing it. That's my point. There will be an opportunity. Can I, can I answer this one, Jeff? I mean, anybody could go do it. Just walk down the Russell Street and walk in 200 yards to the quarry. Well, that's, it's completely that's loaded. That's property. That's all Boston. What? That's, that, that, you mean on the Independence Greenway? I'm or? talking about the rail trail right there. That Russell Street, that's a continuation of this near Boss Tech. That, that, but that's private property. That's Bostick's property. No. No. Yes. You mean the Independence Greenway itself? Whatever name they use, I, I, well, the paved the paved trail. Yeah. Correct. We'll have to I, I just went down there. I've been down there twice in the last uh, week and a half. I and I did not notice that. Oh. Can, can I answer I that? I was on a bike. Wait one second. Rita was next, mm -hmm. and I will get yeah. to you. All right. Just to answer this, there will also be a, a, a bike path committee in town. That if this is sponsored by LUC, if it winds up going to town meeting, being still sponsored by LUC, if it would be just like any park in town or something that if you see just what you saw, something that is disgusting in the middle of it, you saw somebody hurt, you saw a, a dead, dead dog or something like that, the, there would be signs along there also to call a particular number that LUC would have to respond to it and take care of the path. There will be a committee, just like when we start to go to the other committees, what worked the best? We've got calls out to the DPWs in every town. We've got calls out to the Board of Health, the Police and Fire Department. We've already heard from some of the and a good question that you asked about, uh, you know, the bikes down there. We've already heard from some of the different police departments and fire departments that have asked, what, did, what do you like about your town? What do you not like? We're going to put that together so we'll also have the pros and the cons that they say. And some of the pros that they felt was going to be a con, there may be people down there that you don't want on the path. But by the police being able to have a path now, they can ride their, uh, whether it's motorcycles, they can ride whatever they're going to ride, the police, their bicycles through the path, two and a half acres, uh, two and a half miles, they'll go through it, and they're going to come back and see if there are people along there. So you're going to have more police detail than you've had on any bike paths before, or in the backyards. If you have bikers that don't belong down there, then the police will get, eventually go down there, or the residents will have to be able to call a particular number and say, this is what's going on, and someone will look at it. 
So it'll be just like any other path we have that we'll take care of it. But those, again, those are the things we're compiling from other towns to find out what they do and how does it work best having that. Relative to some of the topics that have been brought up tonight, because there are some answers and there are some, we need to do more homework, right? So I was just wondering, before this actually goes to the town warrant to ask if we're willing to pay tax dollars to move forward, is there another meeting like this where these questions are answered? Or I, I, in my introduction to the meeting, I said there should be, there, should, there will probably be another hearing before. And, um, if it was going to be a warrant article, we go before the select board as well, and the select board usually has a meeting that they hear argument on. So if the LUC says let the select no, I mean, <laughs> no, there there'll be other opportunities to speak out. Yes. Thank you. One of the other oh, one of the other things uh, we, we had a, a walk of the the wood part of the trail, the, the, the true part of the trail, a few weeks ago for the committee members that were couple of members of the public there as well. But the idea would be if people are interested, we can do another walk um, and, and people can actually see, because I'll bet most people in this room have never been in Riverwoods. They've never been in the, the Linfield section. They really don't know what, this beautiful area of woods that did formerly belong to B Bill Smith, um, you know, what's, what's out there today. Um, and you know you could walk it today and see it. it. It just would become more accessible with with putting this trail in. And that's a segue into me because I don't want everybody behind there because that's my backyard. So I understand everybody's passion up there for wanting this bike trail. However, unfortunately, being a homeowner, that's going to be on this trail, standing on my deck. It's 150 feet away. I have three little kids. I'm concerned with the safety as well. I guess I'm just confused in the sense that I've kind of been following this from the beginning. I know the path has changed. So the path that you have now, you don't have access out of Englewood and Apple Tree. So how can you present this to the school committee if you don't have access there? I mean, we're, we're in the process of negotiating access. Okay. Um, and part of, the, part of the next phase, part of what the $850,000 would go to is to to work with homeowners that are amenable to design access. So, you know, a lot of the answers that people want aren't, you know, we can provide some of the answers by meeting with the conservation committee, meeting with the chiefs of police, doing some of that, but a lot of the answers are gonna come out of that next 25% design. Okay, over here. Uh, we're passionate that we don't want it, so I think <laughs> yeah, as enough. much as I appreciate your passion case. for it, mine is on the other end, and I just don't. And, and, and it's going to go to. We all need those next answers because without those answers, you know, we can't make more informed decisions. And I think that. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. At this point, the safety, the enforcement on the trails, the parking in our quiet dead end neighborhood that we bought in, and that we bought in for that reason. So I think it is, you know, upsetting that, you know, our home is going to be changing if this does pass. So I think that we, as homeowners, are really wanting to know what else is going into this. And I do like the form, and I appreciate everybody being here and being open. And we just hope that that transparency continues and, you know, Hopefully, get it away from. And, and just to build off that, okay, if you, if you put an email address down, when we have our meetings, you'll be contacted. Yeah, you're all on Facebook, I believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's easy. I won't be putting it on Facebook every time we have, every, we have a hearing, yes, but every time that we meet, I won't do it, but I have been doing it with people who might want to join us via Zoom or, or in person. So you can put down an email contact, that's up to you. Or have a friend that, that will let you know. Just a couple of points I want to make uh, going back to the, the conditions and, and the kids getting in there and doing their partying. Have, has anybody been down to the Ipswich River Park lately? Anybody on the LUC? Have you been down there? The, the place is a disgrace. It's not kept up. You can't use the tennis court. You can't use the horseshoe pit. You can't use the skating rink. The place is a complete mess. 
We can't keep up with the Ipswich River Park, but we want to add these miles of trails into town. I, who's going to keep it up? Do we have, or is that in the next phase also? Well, Please. Okay. Uh, the horseshoe pit's been there for over 20 years. I think it's maybe been used three times. So I'm, that, nobody's going to. So it doesn't get kept up. So no one can go and use it right now. Because so does the DPW well, when, when do it? Well, you've got to prioritize. And, and what I'm saying is since nobody used it when it was brand new, and it hasn't been something that we've ever been worried that it's Then no one's worried about it. So we, we, we've spent all this money on the Ipswich River Park. Spent all this money on the horseshoe pit? It, on the whole park, on the whole park, Ken, in that whole park, the only thing they do down there is mow the lawn. Well, I would, I will, I will yield to Rex. Okay, please do. Yeah. I'd like to find out why it's a mess. Well, I'll, be, I'll meet anybody down there tomorrow and go through it. It's, uh, if you, you look at... pictures of it. No, no, no. If you look at you, if everybody looks at the yard uh, after the, the winter, it's taken everybody time to get it done. It's the same thing with... The, it's the same thing with parks and recreation. We have a couple of members, a uh, couple of people down there that take care of it and take every other field in town. Right. And we're doing, I think, a, a pretty good job, to be honest with you. If you look at the plantings and things, uh, it's 24, it opened, uh, it's 25 years old now. Yep. And after 25 years, we are uh, voting to finish uh, paying some paving in there that needs to be done. You'll see how the, there are cracks and things like that, just like it might be in your driveway. We're doing the best we can in it, but understand this, the only thing the town pays for in recreation are three directors, and the rest of the money that we pay for uh, the directors in parks, recreation, um, and the summer programs, we run summer programs. The, town, the park was voted best of uh, the Reddings last year, and we've been written up in the globe a number of times. So I think if you go down there, winter, summer, fall, and spring, and go through it, if you're having a bad day because we haven't got all the uh, things pruned that need to be done, I think it's awful hard to look at it and say that it's a, a, a I, terrible time. Me pot. and my wife walk no, through that's there just if, very often. In the, and if you, as you oh, walk along there, you see all the side projects are just not taken care of in any way, shape, or form. And I'm not no, going no, against no. parks and recreation because they do. They mow the grass. The fields are in beautiful shape, let me tell you. But the side projects, as in the horseshoe pits, tennis courts, um, the skating rink, the skateboard thing, the, oh, some of them are actually dangerous. They're so unkept. We did just. Are so we going to add more in that we can't take care of? No, no, we're not. We're not doing that. We That's what take it care sounds of, like. If anybody sees really anything dangerous or disgusting down at the park, please call the Parks Department, especially for IRP. Okay, the bike path will be under a different uh, division, yeah. uh, but it'll still be kept up. But if there's anything that you see absolutely dangerous or it looks like it should be cleaned up, please call Parks and Rec, 978-664-6016. It's pretty 60, obvious 16. we should be calling. All right, somebody else? question what is the cost going to be for maintenance after the grant is over the discussions I've had with the state and talking to people that have had bike have bike trails in other parts of the country you're talking very low maintenance I mean we're not talking about making this into Ipswich River Park where they're going to be playing fields it's 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 a paved trail there are paved bridges there are boardwalks that's not to say they wouldn't need to be repaired at some point in the future but the the it's cheaper to have paved um, surfaces than, than stone dust. Um, and the state requires pavement to be, that, that's just what the state puts in. So um, the cost is around $2,000 a mile, two, two $3,000 a mile maybe. So you're talking $5,000 a year or something like that to, to, to maintain the trail. And if we would, I mean, if, if there's more area that would need to be maintained, this is a good project for high schoolers. You can do it as part of community service. There, there are ways to minimize the cost of maintenance. It's, it, it's, it's not a big factor. Anyone else on that? Do we have a, do you have another page of frequently yeah. asked questions? Um, will parking areas and crossing on busy roads disrupt traffic? Um, part, of, part of the design phase is a, is a, is a traffic plan. It's a, key, it's a key component of the next phase. Something 
we, again, we wouldn't have an answer to um, before going to town meeting because the question has to be answered as part of the, the design. Um, the, the parking entrances would be designed in such a way to, to make sure that traffic coming in and going out don't disrupt the traffic flow on those roads. Um, there, uh, where there's a where, where pedestrians would cross a street, um, there would certainly be cross rocks, crosswalks that there, there could be a pedestrian light. Um, these are not big traffic lights that, that disrupt traffic for you know, minutes at a time. If you, there's lots of examples around. Route 1 has one in Topsfield. These are short little lights that flash yellow for the, the time it takes for somebody to cross. Um, um, so I, I don't think that uh, access to the traffic um, or, the, or, or the pedestrian lights would going to present any sort of change. Light back there, no. Yeah. Just yell. <laughs> It didn't look like there was a whole lot of parking. I know right off of Elm Street that was one, yep. and I'm assuming by the the park off of Park Street there'll be some parking, which is not much, like four cars. So the the park that you're starting North Parish Park. Yes, yeah, sorry. There's probably room for ten or fifteen cars. Well, but the amount of people on a weekend, if you go to the bike trail in Peabody, example. I mean, the rollerblading, the bikes, the people with their families, the stroll. That's a lot of people. My concern is I'm in the same position as Michelle, where I would, people are going to be parking on our street, cutting through our property essentially to access because they can cut right into the trail. I mean, essentially you could walk, you know exactly where I live. I mean, you, you hang a left and you're right in River Woods. I know with the tree that was down in the picture. I mean, that's literally part like right off my driveway. So somebody could just park on Wright Street and mosey on down easily because I just don't see that how much parking. There's also parking at Ipsa Tour Park. So okay. It does, go through, it does go through Ipsa Tour Park. And essentially this should get you into the Peabody, correct? So this would be a, a way for people in North Riding to get into the Peabody, correct? I mean, if you want to do that side of it. I, I, I mean, that's a long walk. I mean, if you're bicycling, you, you could easily bicycle from North Reading to Peabody, but it's- I guess I'm thinking more miles. on the Park Street, not the Park Street, and I'm thinking more on the Elm Street end, which is where I live, which is closer to, I can I can get over to Linfield Peabody, that four corners in about 15 minutes walking mm -hmm. pretty quickly if I want to. So yeah. that's why I'm saying. A lot of people are gonna come from that way and tie in over to Peabody, which is beautiful, you know? I just don't- Yeah. I, I, I mean, see much parking on that end of town. <laughs> I mean, I don't think people are going to park in on the north in that 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 Elm Street lot to get to Independence Greenway. It's just too far. It's, it'd be like a two mile a two mile walk. Um, but is that the whole point of this to walk and bike? <laughs> like, it is. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm just saying, like, is that the whole point for it to I be a walking people, and bike? I mean, two miles bicycle, is not like an excessive are, amount. It's not like twenty. On a bicycle, it, it's, it's 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 different. I, it, yeah, but people people. Park <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to go to PB. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's possible. But so you, you, to answer your question, I don't know exactly. It could be 20 cars. Mm -hmm. that, that, that spot, is, it, it's not just that flat you. spot that you saw in the picture. The yeah. parking area would extend mm -hmm. into the, there's a drop off, and it would be, there, there, it would be a su supported parking area. So it would be a much bigger parking area than just that flat spot. Okay. So it could be, I don't know whether it's 15 cars or 20 cars, but it would be a significant number of cars. I mean, could it fill up on a weekend? Sure. I just think anything to discourage people on private roads, I, I don't want a Saturday, if I have a barbecue on a Saturday afternoon, I don't want to be competing with 10 of my nearest and dearest strangers looking to get into the trail. That's, I mean, that's, I think part, you know, making sure there's ample parking along the trails. Yeah, I mean, no parking, can, no parking signs can be put on the, on the, on the residential. Signs don't do much, Phil. <laughs> We had a nice looky loo walking down today. Hey, ever you know what I'm saying? I'm just signs. People don't. It's just signs don't do much. Oh, just, oh. I, I, again, I would just say I think that's a fair assessment that we should be looking at the amount of parking along on, the whole trail. Like people are going right. to access it different ways. In that beyond those, because people will, I mean, if you go to Peabody, people pull up with their cars, with their bikes on their bike racks, and just, especially ones who have little kids who aren't gonna use the road for access to do it. So, I mean, 
parking would be something. Yep, and, and, and it, it, it has to be determined as part of that design phase. It's one of the things they have to look into. I have two questions real quick. If yeah. there's going to be construction on 62, let's say 62 and Pleasant Street, who pays for the police detail? We do or the state? The state would. The state will pay for that. And on that Pleasant Street parking lot that you're considering, wouldn't we have to have a... You mean the, the, the Elm Street parking Elm lot? Elm Street and Pleasant Street. Is that that... But it's not on Elm Street. It's on... Par, it's on a par, It's on... It's completely on Elm Street. 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 Right. You would have to have a light there so people could cross 62 because the sidewalk is across the street there. I mean, there's nothing on the other. There's nothing on the other side of 62 that would involve the trail. It's only people, it's, if people are riding their bicycle or walking on the sidewalk to cross over, let's say, to where the parking lot is to meet I mean, somebody, it, walk down the trail. There wouldn't you have to have a light there so people could cross 62 because it's very dangerous. You mean if they're on the existing sidewalk? Yes, to cross the street there. I, I mean, that's a good question. I think that would have to be part. If if, if I mean, I hadn't anticipated that a lot of people are going to be coming from the existing sidewalk, but perhaps Why there would. Per they? The big residential no it, it, it would, it, it, and maybe they do. Maybe you do need a, a, a pedestrian passing. You would. You wouldn't be able to cross the but, street there and live. But that would be a spot where, if you go through Danvers, Bill talked about the flashing yellow lights that you. On 62? Yes, on 62 in Danvers, you can see such a light. Not on the curve there at Pleasant Street. That's a dangerous area. We all know that. But they, they, they have pedestrian lights all, all throughout our area that work great. If you actually travel the trail and you need to cross the street, they have one on Route 1. I just said that. Yeah. All right. Next question. Oh, 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 sorry, you oh, get your mic. I, I will answer the question about where people are going to park. They're going to park on Apple Tree Lane. And that's how they're going to actually, because what it's a hundred feet to the path that way, and you don't have to work a quarter a quarter mile down the path. So that's where they're all parked. If you're asking, Anglewood and Apple Tree. There's your answer. Yeah, if we put up no parking sites, how do people come to your house to visit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with them. Yeah, no. no. They... Right. Yeah. I mean. I mean, I don't know why people would park on Englewood when they can park on Elm Street. Elm Street, Elm Street is going to be the main the main entrance into the park. Apple Tree and Englewood is where you're talking about coming out. Coming out, but that's not the primary entrance oh, into yeah. Riverwoods. The primary entrance into Riverwoods would be over on uh, on Elm Street. Yeah, but you're still talking about cutting through a piece of property that's there to go on Englewood or a Englewood right. or Apple Tree. So if that's the case, some of the people are going to be going there, parking there to go in. I mean, why wouldn't you if that's where you, the entrance is? As, okay, I, I've written down to look at the parking. People at home. People at home can't. Oh, they don't want to hear me, I'm sure. But anyway, now they'll be sorry I picked up the mic. <laughs> I've written down parking. That's one of the things that we'll look into. We're not promoting parking over in that on those streets. You know, we're, we'll look at what the parking alternatives are to, you know, again, you, like you say, you know, you can't just go putting up no parking signs or whatever. So we'll, we'll be looking at that, okay? I'm, I'm just saying, it's not gonna, it's, it, we'll, we'll see what we can be looking at for alternatives for parking, okay? Any other? Okay, next. Um, you know, are there examples of similar trails in, in other towns? Um, yes, and I said uh, Middleton, Danvers, Peabody, Topsfield, Boxford, Newburyport, Linfield, um, Georgetown, Groveland. Um, almost, almost, uh, we're sort of behind the town. Uh, everything that we're talking about today, other towns have gone through. The, the issues with parking, the issues with the, the lights, the issues with, with eminent domain, the issues with the butters, the issue with safety. None of this is new. This is this is what every town goes through whenever they put these things in. So so other towns have successfully gotten these things through. Matter of fact, sometimes they don't go through the first time. Sometimes they happen a few years later. But most times most times these things are worked out. And once they're in place, um, people people are quite happy with the with the results. 
Oh, thank you. No. Oh. Yeah, um, in the studies that you've done with these nearby trails, uh, they're used for recreation as one purpose, but do we see in these other towns, have they been used uh, in a way that helps students get to school? Do we know if students are have used those trails as that purpose? And is that likely to be something that this town would benefit from? Also, do we know anything? I know these numbers are really hard to get and the towns probably don't want to share them, but have we seen what the numbers in the towns that do have them of uh, pedestrian related traffic incidents are, do we have any knowledge of whether that might decrease with increased uh, trails like this? I, I, I don't know the answers to, the, to those questions. I, I, um, there's probably some national studies that are done. Um, I mean, I've read this, there's different studies that have been done on Massachusetts, but some of the data points are hard to, to come by and you know, it's, it's, it's causality is probably pretty hard to tell in some cases. Um, so I don't know the answer. Going to school, um, I know the trail they're trying to put in in Linfield goes behind some elementary schools, um, but well, for for example, the one in Danvers goes right by a public school in Danvers. Um, now I could go and ask my uncle because he lives near there. Well, the but do we have any anecdotal anecdotal knowledge of whether students are no. able to use that safely? I mean, they certainly they certainly could. I mean, it would. I mean, it certainly would be safe. I mean, the the the, the, the um, Proctor School in Topsfield, the elementary school in Topsfield, is right on the right on their trail. Okay. Um, I see. I am there. I'm there quite often, and I do see kids riding their bikes on that trail um, regularly. So I don't see why they wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, the the the. the, the, the I mean, one of the big pluses is this, we're building the, the bridge from the high school yeah. into Ipswich River Park. So it's, it's not so much going to school, it's getting, going into the, the kids that want to get into the park to use the playing fields or use the skate park or whatever. Right now, they either have to get a ride, probably most likely to get a ride because they don't want to walk that far. Um, but this, this, the, the bridge, not, the, not necessarily all the rest of the trail, but that single bridge will, will, will reduce... Um, what kids have to where kids have to walk by just by itself. Okay, thank you, Reardon. Could you pass the mic back yeah. to Ms. Moore? Um, I'm looking at all the communities that have listed up there. You may want to contact these other communities to get some of these questions answered relative to any crime uh, impact on our butters, uh, who maintains it for them, what the cost yep. is to the, yep. those communities. Yep. I mean, they have the information. And I and, and and I actually know the people that are responsible for the rail trails in, in, in quite a few of those towns. Okay, well, this all I'm suggesting is is that oh, we could bring bring forward information that we could all probably right, use. Right, right. And, and that's why I'm saying that these things have been worked out. And can I answer? Okay, and I appreciate that, Phil. It just would be nice if Paul, we had some information Paul, to understand. Get, the letters the uh, letters have gone out this week. Uh, we've contacted the police, fire department. Uh, there are letters going to the DPW uh, Board of Health. And all of the our department's heads are making the calls uh, to their counterparts in other towns to ask them legitimately. Because when we ask them to stand up at a town meeting, everybody that's a department head in town, that we always ask, you know, how are you going to handle this? They all need to know about it. It's not going to be just this committee. So we're asking them to check with the counterparts. What do they think about it? Because you hear from people that say, hey, this is terrible in my backyard, this is terrible, whatever. And we're asking the police and fire. So you're not getting people like us that you think might have a, a, an advantage that we're trying to tw tweak the answer. We're asking all our department heads to make calls to their counterparts in all the surrounding towns and find out what did you like, what did you not like. Okay, that this comment was basically addressed to, to the LUC uh, so, so that they could, not to fill, it, it, you know, it's, it's, you're going to be the one putting this forward. No, but I'm saying as LUC, we're asking them so that we'll have the information. It's what we do in any of the parks that we do. We go on at Mass, Parks and Rec. If Recreation has something to ask everybody else how they have problems in their town, how they serve it, whatever. Right, so, so are, you, are you asking that each department, like DPW or I'm asking, this department, I'm, I'm ask these other communities? Yes, I've asked the information. their counterpart people there so they can right. legitimately, a police chief talking to a police chief, fire department talking to the fire department. Okay, that's, that's corn, perfect. Corn talking to corn, corn, CPC talking. all I'm asking talking. is that somebody yeah, contacts Yeah, absolutely. We've got a list that we've asked them to, 
do, and they've been, uh, so far, two of the apartments we've asked, as soon as they got it, within half an hour, got back to us with uh, just talking to them three of the times that we asked them about. So yes, we ask them, because those are the things we want to know. We do not want to put something forward to ask people if we really don't know that the, uh, you know, the department heads and their other communities have addressed this and what were their issues along the way. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question, up oh, slide. Any lighting along the way, or is there any parking lot lighting involved? The plans at this moment don't call for any lighting. Um, I, I don't think there'll any be security any lighting. lighting at any of these parking areas, parking probably, lots. Probably not along the trail for anybody that's there at dusk or dawn. Oh, no, the, the, the trail was intended for daytime use. And what about emergency response? Is there any lighting for the emergency response teams? There's no plans for any. No, they'd, they'd have to use their own lights. Okay. But there is no, no plans for any of that? There's no plans for electricity being there. Okay. Yeah, no, don't make promises you can't keep. I know, this is true, too. But uh, I'm just, I guess, back, I'm going up a question or two there about the upkeep of the trail and that. A um, little disappointed about the Ipswich River Park where you said, well, those those parts of Ipswich River Park weren't used, so they're not up, they're not kept up. So what if no one's using one of the bridges on this trail? If no one's using it, are we just gonna let it deteriorate and fall down? It's not gonna be kept up because someone's not using it? Just like we've done at Ipswich River Park. We've let it fall apart. I just address that? Sorry, Ken, you didn't see me. Um, as far, no, we're, we're not gonna let it deteriorate. We'll constantly, as we do with Ipswich River Park, constantly go in and assess and make plans. The tennis courts, the basketball courts, we try and keep the little kids with their bikes off of the tennis courts. Now there are cracks. We've gone in, we have maintained the tennis courts, but hopefully this year we've got some money and the tennis courts and the basketball courts are going to be resurfaced. So it's a long process. We have a lot of volunteers who are going in, cutting out all of the bittersweet. It's, it's a big job. They don't have the money. Right, so we're adding We're to trying, that now. But, but we're going to, we work at it. We continually work at it. And that's what will happen with the trail. It will be worked at constantly and, and we're not going to have bridges that are going to collapse okay all right i mean i'm just trying to point out that we haven't kept up with it ipswich river park i mean as much as you say we've kept up with it we, we have it pardon you and i were walking it tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not talking about making sure that it's river park. i mean the trail the the the, the, the paved trail will pretty much be by itself. I mean, it'll be wild, it'll be wild woods on either side of the trail. Um, and particularly where it abuts homeowners, there'll be a fence um, keeping people away from getting on private property. So, um, I mean, yes, the, uh, bridges do wear, wear out after time. I mean, I would expect this stuff has a 20, 30 year lifetime. Um, might it need repairs now and again? Do what? The maintenance and the upkeep would be North Reading, yes. Two, two to three thousand dollars a mile, so about five, five thousand, six thousand dollars a year. That's what that's what other towns and cities and states have run into um, for a paved trail. It's minimal. Okay. Next. Sorry. You get one with a green light on. You can answer it. Um, I'm really not speaking in response to a frequently asked question, but I have a question. Okay. Everything that North Reading does, whether whatever capital project, has to be maintained over time. We know that when we vote for it. I don't get to use the athletic fields. I don't have children in school, 
but I'm really in favor of a walking trail, and I would con- urge you to continue your good work. I had great involvement with the Danvers Rail Trail. I listened to every citizen's complaint about it, and we worked through all of those problems. It's a, we are so far behind in rail trails and in bike trails. The road's already been paved. The process is very clear. Everybody who needs to get involved at the state and local level is involved. And I urge you to continue doing the terrifically good work you're doing. I'm looking forward to having it, at least in my lifetime, I might take a walk. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we've, we've actually answered, um, we talked about sidewalks, we talked about it being lit and plowed in the winter. There's no plans to light, light, uh, light it or plow it in the winter. Um, ongoing maintenance, I, I think uh, 1,000, 2,000, let's, let's double it. Um, this, I, I had these conversations a few years ago before COVID, so let's assume that inflation, it's double. It's still not a huge amount of money. Are similar trails safe from crime? We've talked a bit about that. Um, very common question. Every time these comes up, people think that people are going to come in from the less affluent towns surrounding that trail, and and uh, the crime will follow, will follow the trail. But it, it just it just doesn't happen, and we'll get confirmation from our police chief. Um, one of the questions that come up is if if a, if a property owner does choose to give us an easement, um, is there any liability associated with that easement? And and there are state there are state um, laws protecting any home, any any property owner who grants an easement from uh, from liability. So it, it's actually a sort of a, a non-issue. Um, ATV dirt bikes. We've we've talked about those. Um, uh, one of the concerns um, was Wright Street. Um, Wright Street goes into the property that is still owned by um, the Smith family um, and the Coviello family, for that matter. Um, and one of the early one of the, one of the early routes that we looked at for the um, for the trail would have crossed Drew Drew's property would have crossed my property would have gone down Wright Street would have crossed um, would have crossed uh, the Smith property um, and gone in that way and then we wouldn't have needed any bridge but it cro- that there was a lot of homeowner resistance to that that approach so we basically abandoned um, any any suggestion that we were going to go down Wright Street. Um, a lot of the dirt bikes, I think, are still ent- going down going down R- Wright Street. Um, people are trespassing um, to get into the to get into River Woods on Wright Street. So my answer to Wright Street, if anything, once this if this ever got built and there was a bridge on Elm Street, it would basically people would would not be on Wright Street. Wright Street should be one area of town that benefits benefits considerably from having from moving moving this this traffic away from it um, do trails reduce uh, abutter property values um, there's been a lot of studies um, and there's no indication that trails uh, reduce property values in fact there there is some evidence that uh, property values increase um, for abutters um, and for n- nearby homeowners um, um, Will the trail increase noise and crime? Um, again, very big concern. We've talked about it a number of times already in this meeting. Uh, abutters are concerned that there's going to be more partying, or there's going to be people down there, or that somehow uh, th- th- their family is in danger. Um, again, w- the police chiefs. This is the police chiefs respond to this um, universally when there's a new new park. So we'll get our the North Reading police chief will respond to it. So it's not just me standing up here or our team standing up here saying saying it's fine. We'll, we'll get the people who know to, to say it's, it, it, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, next question, we've already talked about Englewood Lane and, 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 and Apple Tree Lane. I mean, I, I, and, and, and Pleasant Street for that matter. Um, uh, I, I can't answer it. I can't say that no one will ever park there. I mean, we'll try to do whatever we can during the planning phase to figure out other options so that there's more inducement to have people park where we want them to park and not to park on, 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 on residential streets. Um, um, how much of the trail um, is on or near the historical rail bed? And I mean, in, in some places, we're going to be right on the rail bed. So pretty much from 
Ipswich River Park, it's almost entirely on the rail bed. And then west of Ipswich River Park is entirely on rail bed. Um, um, and uh, when we go off of Haverhill Street, you won't be on the real rail bed because it goes right through the, 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 the automobile body shop. But we're going to go around it. We're going to be very, very close to the rail bed. And, and certainly in, uh, in Riverwoods, it's going to be on the rail bed. And I, I, I just measured it the other day. And you can take, take the map that's, that, that you can download uh, right from this document. And you can do your own. You can do it on, you can do it on, uh, on Google Maps just the way I did. And you come up with about, about 3 quarters of a mile that's that's on riverbed or near riverbed or near rail trip near uh, rail bed um, and there's about one and a quarter the total trail is around two miles um, um, that could vary depending on where the sidewalks go and things like that but around so is it 65 35 or 68 32 it, it's somewhere it's somewhere in it's not 14 percent um, so um, so I mean, you can do your own measurements. So you don't have to listen to me. I, it's, it's, I'll leave that to the reader. Um, is mass is mass uh, dot funding for North Reading Trail dependent on Linfield completing their trail? That was a question that was asked recently. No, it's not. the 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 requirement for mass dot as it affects North Reading is it has to be a continuous trail that starts on a roadway and ends on a roadway. So while it would, I mean, personally, I'd be fine if we built the bridge in, from Elm Street into Riverwoods and there, was, there were no sidewalks at all. And then we just built the bridge from um, Park Street into Ipswich River Park and built a stretch that went to Chestnut Street. That, that would be fine. The, 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 the purpose of Englewood, Apple Tree, and all the sidewalks is, is to comply with the requirement for MassDOT that it be a continuous trail. Um, so it, it's, it's not that, that the sidewalks are the be all and the end all. It's basically that one requirement so that, that if we meet that requirement and we meet the design, then they will build the bridge. They will build the bridge over the Ipswich in the two places. They'll build the bridge over that span of where the rail bridge was. They'll build the, build the bridge that sort of comes off of Park, off of Haverhill Street, and cuts through the marshland, and and that's what costs you know eight, ten, twelve million dollars. Um, but we only get it if we have a continuous trail. Um, same question, basically, if Bostick does not grant an easement through to Boston Street in in Middleton. Um, does does that prevent access to the Independence Greenway? No, because uh, Linfield has already act, has already bought a, a parcel of property that abuts Main Street and um, and their and their greater center water center water district land. So there there is there there is property now. There is and they're they're building the trail. They're, they're, they hired consultants to come in and, and, and design the trail to connect to connect Main Street Linfield. With the rail bed, so um, that that's going to happen. It's not going to be a beautiful paved trail, but it would be a walking trail. So that's that's the end of my FAQs. Yes. Well, the the rail the, if if you've gone if you've walked in there, you, you know that the the, the 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 trail already exists. The rail bed you could drive a car on the rail bed today. Um, so they're already if you if you brought a piece of grading equipment in and just graded it, you'd have a perfectly feasible trail immediately. It'd be, it'd be minimal cost. So. Linfield needs to do very, very little to to create a trail network in their town. Um, so um, they're not pursuing mass dot the way we are. They don't have the cost. They don't have to build huge bridges to get into their into, into their land. They can simply cut um, a few a few trails where there aren't any and connect to this already quite extensive trail system. So do you know at this time, is that a part of their plan for them to connect? Yes, yes, they have, con they've hired consultants. As a matter of fact, the, 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 the uh, one of the assistant Linfield planners, when we did the walk um, a week or so ago, she was with us on the walk. 
Um, they've um, already arranged access through the Lynn Pumping Station Bridge for their consultants to bring trucks in and, and start the planning process um, for their trails. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it, it's um, part of it is what do you consider what what uh, Oh, I know where I'm in the wrong, wrong presentation. Potentially four. Four, okay. And okay. I'm just curious right. where the four are located. So, so, so here's, 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 here's the map. So starting from the west, there's, there's the bridge from, from, from Elm Street through the marshes that, that to, for the trail that would connect right to the Linfield line. So that, that's a big bridge. It's probably, I don't know, two, 300 yards because it's got to span not only the river but the marshes. Um, and that is approximately where is that location? Because I can't really see it there. Right here? Yeah. It's, it's, that's, the, that's by Pleasant Street? It's right by Pleasant Street? Yeah. Okay. And that's where the park, you propose the parking also? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that, 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 that's, a ma that's a major bridge. Okay. Um, with a major span of the wetlands and the Ipswich. Yeah. Um, then down here, where Havel's, where the, where the, on Havel Street, where you have the bridge over the Ipswich on Havel Street? Yes. Um, there's... There's a piece of, to, to avoid um, a, a, a piece of privately owned land, um, the, the bridge would, the bridge, would, the, the, there would probably be a connection into the bridge itself. Um, so that's so this is like where of, North Reading Auto is, right? Close yes. To, right there. It's to, the, it's to the north of North Reading Auto. So, okay, yeah. So here, here's a blow up of that area. So you see, it, it would probably connect right to the bridge. We, we don't want to go through this gentleman's, the, Mr. Hines' property. He owns these two lots here. So we'd go, we'd stay north, very close to the river. Now this is so marshy in here. This is a question, is this a bridge or is this just a boardwalk? It's, it's not, it's, it's down a bit. It, it, it's probably gonna have to be constructed in a way similar to a bridge. So, so then, then, there's, then there's this, um, um, th this, this, this bridge here um, that goes from Park Street. Where, here's the high school playing fields over here. Um, and then, and then this is a major bridge. Pretty much, it's going to be just about as extensive as the bridge that's over on uh, Elm Street. Very large bridge because it's very this this area here. That's um, I, I don't know if it's technically it's all town-owned land. So yes, maybe it's part of Ipswich River Park, but it's all it's all real marsh. It's kind of dry right now. Um, so and then. If you if you go to the if you go out of Ipswich River Park and you go to that area where we had um, the abutment, the picture of the abutment that we had earlier. Um, yeah. The, I believe. Uh, North Parish. Uh, you, North Parish. Yeah, I think it was the one. Okay, so. North Parish Park's over here. Okay, yeah. And so now, is there a bridge? There's a bridge. If you see, if you see right here, I was going to try to bring up the picture of that abandoned rail bridge where you saw pilings. Right. The, the, the Ipswich River crosses the the, the the old rail bed right here where the the cursor is. Mm -hmm. So there would have to be a bridge there, but that's not a very big bridge. Right. Um, if I can could can find the. the I just have some it. concerns in that area because I own three of the properties that abut that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I, I realize you do. Mm. Okay, so it's a total of four, basically at this point. Potentially, there we go. Okay, right. So, so it would it, it's going to be your your prop whatever the properties that you own. There would be there'd be fences on the on the rail on the. When you say a fence, right? Is it is it a post and rail fence or is it a stockade fence? So it it would be whatever we we would work it out with you what what you what what your requirements were. Certainly, would be more than a post and rail fence. A, maybe a chain link fence. Maybe maybe a. You know, if you want a solid fence, maybe we can. Yeah. Okay. We just. But okay. we can put. Obviously, plant obviously, it's going to be an issue that has to be addressed. They could okay. put plantings in, um, but but yeah, no, I realize this 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 three or four this businesses and there's there's right. a couple there's a couple of homes in there. Right. Um, I mean, this particular bridge, I don't think this is going to be a major deal. It's you got solid land on both sides. It's just mm -hmm. it's just a simple span. Okay. So, two major bridges, 
one, one, one that's probably more boardwalk than bridge, but sort of a bridge. And then this thing that's. So what's the typical width of the, of the bridge is going to be? Uh, probably 12, 14 feet. Okay. I mean, they have to be wide enough so you, know, you can get an ambulance down them. Okay. Well, yeah, but that's, that's what you stated was light weight emergency vehicles. What does, what does that classify for an actual ambulance that we have? Is that considered lightweight? Yeah, I mean, we, it, yeah, it would be like you, you couldn't get a fire truck down it, but you could get a police cruiser down it. Okay. Well, it's just a concern because there's going to be people going to be out there and there's going to be an emergency out there. Can you actually get an ambulance out there? Yes. The idea would be you can get an ambulance down there. Right. It may not be the case with the one that goes from the high school because there'll be other access right there. Right. It's close. And, and the, the high school one is going to be more of a. Well, I'm just bringing it up for. For the reason that, okay, we're going to have these bridges, you have to make sure that the safety is there for the people. Right, right. And, and the, the bridge that connects to the Haverhill Street, to the Haverhill Street probably wouldn't, would probably be less too. Okay, but the, I guess the other question is, what is the typical width of the trail going to be? Well, I think it's going to vary on the sidewalks. I, I'm guessing. I'm not talking, I'm talking about it on the, on the actual railroad bed. Probably, tw probably 12, 14, 12 to 14 feet. Okay. I think the actual paved, I think the actual paved distance is like 12 feet. Okay. Thank you. Is this going to impact our taxes at all? Uh, it, 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 it shouldn't. Um, I mean, the idea, the, 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 the uh, plan when we, when, which, which we pulled when we were, we're going to go to town meeting, I think the proposal there was to take it from free cash. So when we go to town meeting the next time, it'll have to be determined where the meeting, where it would, where it would come from. But I mean, I, we're hoping that it would not impact taxes. Any and grants and grants. Any other questions? Big picture, you know, when we first met, you know, big picture, when we first met two years ago, it was to be able to tie in from, you know, Wilmington to Peabody, right? So ha that entire half of our town from Chestnut back going to Wilmington is now off the table, correct? At the moment, yes. So is it is it essentially a phased project that we're looking at here and we're only looking at one piece of it and not the big picture any longer? That's my question. The, when I stood up before a town meeting and presented the feasibility study, the feasibility study was, was suggested to be a phased project to start out with. And the feasibility study was intended to define the phases. The feasibility study, if you, the first phase of the feasibility study um, actually had it going to Route 28. But when we started, when the cost, that was before he, he planned that way. And then I said, I need, I need the costs. And the cost came in to be too high. I couldn't see going to town meeting and asking for the cost of going from Chestnut Street to um, route uh, to Route 28. So we, we, we scaled it back. We, it, it, it's also possible not to go to Chestnut Street. You could stop the, the park at Ipswich River Park and, it, and the cost would go down by about $200,000. But I think there's, there's benefit in, in, in people exploring this, this area where there's bridges, where I have the photo up right now, and, going, and connecting Ipswich River Park to North Parish Park. And I, I think that for $200,000, um, it, that's probably it's not that much more money to take it just to Chest Chestnut Street. I was just asking because my initial understanding was to tie into this elaborate network of trails, well, basically spanning the state, correct? It, it is, but there is no network at the Wilmington end. Okay. So, so, so um, it, it, things get, start to get very complicated in Wilmington. So, I mean, you, could, you can go to where the, um, that, that health, the, the, the emergency the clinic is, yep. and the trail, the railroad runs behind the clinic. It runs for a little bit more, but, but what happens is you run into 93, you run into Target, it, it gets really complicated, and that, that's, that's Wilmington. So there, there really is no trail network. So you started big and then you yeah. head back. We, that, and, uh, we, is that phase still on the table at some point down the road? I mean, who's to say? I mean, I, I, think, I think right now we have our arms full yeah, with, at, with, at, well, with this phase. At this point, no. I mean, as Phil said, this might take till 2030 to actually get implemented phase one. Okay. I mean, we're going yeah. to know a whole lot more about how it works out Doing the first part. before we get to phase two. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go back to my own issue here is that for $200,000, you're saying it's really not much of an impact. Well, the only people that are going to be impacted 
with that two hundred thousand dollars you're talking about me. There's nobody else in between the park and the river. Right. Okay. okay. Right. And so and now we're also talking about the cost of erecting a bridge. Well if you're gonna use sidewalks, why can't you get to use a sidewalk across the street from North Parish Park and have them go there and then you don't have to go through my backyard of my three properties. I mean there'd be no point to we what? It, we just wouldn't do anything. What do you mean you wouldn't do anything? I mean, there's a, part, there's a sidewalk there now. That's what I'm saying. North Parish Park is already there. I mean, so, so you just, rather than run the I trails. Mean, the whole idea is to, get, is to get more of the trail onto the existing rail bed. And to do it in places where we don't um, have to take easements from homeowners and we're not going through people's yards. And this is a nice stretch of land, it's a nice stretch of rail bed that is owned entirely by the town. It does have a butters. Every, every section of this trail has a butters. Right. So we will need to do what we will need to work with you and the, and the, and the designers will need to work with you to put up fences to, to buffer your property to the best of their ability. Okay. Anyone else? Committee all set? What? So far, a couple of what we found, there are pros and cons to everything, and some of the pros that uh, I don't think we made a big deal about is uh, the walkway across from the school. That really is going to be major uh, to have that because anybody that's walked up and down Haverhill Street knows when the cars go by you and you're even on a small sidewalk, the cars on Haverhill Street whiz by you from where Lou's Mobile was up to... At Park Street? No, I'm saying on Haverhill Street. On Haverhill Street, uh, it's, so the kids now will not have to walk up Park Street. And all the coaches make the kids walk. They don't allow their parents to drive them. It's like one of the things the coaches think it's good to have the kids have to walk there and the parents can't drive them. So they will be able to, uh, hopefully, that would be a big plus, I think. We've always thought that from uh, Parks and Recreation, that we would have if we had that bridge. So there are a lot of negative things that people feel definitely if it's going to impact your with 200 people might live along there are 300 people you're right there are also 13,000 other people in town that are going to have the benefit of the parks if they want to use it so you're right everybody is always going to be at some point but one of the uh, that it's more impacting them maybe but one of the pluses is that for the school for safety it's a huge safety issue uh, if we had that and the other part is, and I've heard anywhere from 65 to 84 percent of uh, this might be on the town-owned property instead of the uh, through the woods. The beauty of that is the state, out of that 10 million dollars, is paying for the sidewalks. And anybody that's lived in town more than one year and has gone to a selectman's meeting or a town meeting has always heard the, the everybody say the stinking town doesn't have any sidewalks and those that they have are so pathetic you can't walk on them or drive on them. The beauty of that is, this is the plus, that the town is paying for sidewalks in the town. It may be a negative that you say, wow, they just put a sidewalk in front of my house, but to the other amount of people that walked there have sidewalks that are gonna be safe for the kids. Um, I lived across from the park uh, and, and Moynihan Lumber. And one of the issues, I don't know if there are any people here from uh, Central Street or Haverhill Street that complained about trucks. You know, they thought Moynihan's trucks were nice and the people were nice, but they still went too fast by their house. And that was always a complaint. So I was on the safety committee at Moynihan's and we would talk about that, how we have to have our drivers go slower and everything. Uh, when I put my house up for sale across from Moynihan's, and the, all the realtors told me how much I had to ask for my house because you're across from a lumber company and you're across from a park and nobody wants to be across from a lumber yard or across from the park. And the first three people that came in that offered to pay like everybody else full value on any house was because I lived across from a park. And I said, you're kidding me. I said, you know, on the weekends that there's a lot of cars and, you know, up across DPW and on the street and everything. But again, parks, when they talk about the value of the houses, Parks, bike paths are a plus. It probably aren't an, uh, maybe a negative to that, but again, living across from that, I lived with parks uh, in my backyard and it was always a plus. If people parked near our street, which they do, and you're right, but some people are gonna pull in Pleasant Street, they might be by Englewood and they may park along there. But what we found is most of the people that parked there were in and were out. And if they were there, 
they were more respectful because they were recreational thinking wise people, conservation thinking wise people that aren't the type that usually throw your trash there. And the third part is about the police department. The police department, when we walked that path and uh, we walked with Deb from the neighborhood there, who was a, a great amount of help being there as a neighbor, walking through it and showed us the areas that had trash that was thrown in there, showed us the areas that had uh, the beer cans and where the kids uh, parked. You now will have police that will, on a normal basis, patrol those areas that they never patrolled before. So when we come to vote just on our committee, we're looking at everything that's a pro and a con. And there are absolutely going to be cons that, you know, people that felt that they were near the parks or the uh, bike paths are near them. And in the end, we probably had 90% of people that were against everything in the beginning on that park. May not work here, but I'm saying that all I ask is everybody to be open, and we are going to be very appreciative of every day, but and every complaint or anything else that you bring to us and all the questions were asked tonight eventually going to continue to be answered and if they're not you can call in any member ken or any member on the committee because they should answer it and you know you know i'll be at the park tomorrow to look at if there are areas that are bad but i know that we've gotten uh, so many compliments on the park and if it's looked lousy now on certain areas we will make sure that's addressed thank you all for what you have said tonight too all right. I just want to say thank you to all of you for coming tonight. Thank you for the atmosphere we maintained. I appreciate the mutual respect back and forth. I assure you we will, if you gave us an email, we'll keep you as updated as we can. And we will look at the issues that were brought up tonight. But thanks again for coming out.